Welcome back. I have some very exciting news. I have finally decided on a name for this show. Are you ready for it? Are you excited for it? Because I am so excited. It's been uh, nine episodes so far and I did not have a name that I liked that I could settle upon and I have finally arrived at it and I think it's going to be good. Uh, and if you don't like it, I, I can't change it again because I've changed this name way too many times and that's way too confusing. So uh, without any more buildup, the name that I decided for this podcast is The Console Log, a weekly show about JavaScript and all things related to the web. Uh, it's a joke, right? Because it's the console log, but also I get to give you a log of all the things that happened the past week. So uh, that's the name. Uh, hopefully you like it. Let me know if you do. And if you don't, also let me know. Just happy to have a conversation with you. Uh, I don't want to dwell on that too much right now, but thank you for the support uh, leading up to this decision. It was very hard to get here. Uh, but we are at a new week. This is the week of October 2nd to October 8th. And it was a pretty fun week. So uh, let's start this console log rolling. First item of the week is that Ember uh, released a blog post about their road to version 3.0. They have been in the uh, 2.x branch for the past two and a half years, and they're looking to be in uh, 3. Point, to release the final version of 3.0 uh, next year. According to their blog post, uh, what I find very exciting is that all their major versions are not a focus on new features, more on deprecating old and breaking changes that have accrued up till then. Uh, so the way that they term it is that Ember, the major releases of Ember are garbage collection releases, and that's pretty cool. Uh, the blog post talks about what APIs are being removed, uh, but also I think the biggest thing that I think is pretty exciting is that there are actually uh, in Ember 3.0 looking to drop support for IE 9, 10, and PhantomJS. Uh, these browsers are very old, and it's been incredible that Ember has full support of that, but the fact that they are feeling confident enough to drop that to not um, isolate a lot of their users who use Ember just for that support is a good sign that the web is moving forward and that we can slowly not have to rely on these browsers anymore. In addition to that, uh, Ember has a VM called Glimmer, and it is what is used underneath the hood to compile the templates in the Ember framework. And there was a new blog post from a uh, engineer at LinkedIn working on the Ember VM, and he was talking about how they are working on the... So Glimmer already has a compiler, but now they're adding a optimizing compiler. And this blog post is very technical. I definitely encourage you to read it if you are interested, not only about uh, Ember, but just uh, templates and like VMs in general, but just trying to figure out how they're trying to optimize as much ahead of time as possible in Ember so that by the time that code hits the browser, the browser has to do as little work as possible. Very interesting article. Definitely recommend that you give it a try or read. Not, not a try, you should just read it. Next news item is that my new favorite text editor, VS Code, had their new 1.17 uh, release. Nothing really exciting about that, but just I always enjoy new things. I always like to share it with you because I think new is nice and shiny. Uh, to keep in the theme of Microsoft releases, TypeScript, also by Microsoft, turned five this past week. That's incredible. Time has flown, and it has definitely influenced JavaScript in a big way. So. Happy birthday to you, uh, TypeScript. Uh, can't wait to see what you're at when it, you're 10 years old. Can you imagine that? Wow. Just as there are birthdays, there are also deaths. And in sad news, you might have already heard this, AIM, the AOL Instant Messenger, has announced that they will actually be finally shutting down service after 20 years on December 15th. A lot of good memories in AIM. Gonna miss, I'm not going to miss it because I don't use it anymore, but it's just sad to see one of those dinosaurs go the way of the dinosaurs. But bye AIM. I will miss you. Your sight was true and your AIM was not so true. And last but not least, I saw an amazing demo this past week uh, posted on CodePen of somebody using CSS Grid uh, with clip paths to make this incredible layout of a comic book entirely with HTML and CSS. Uh, this demo, I think, single-handedly uh, 
was the kick in my butt that made me actually sit down yesterday and start reading about CSS Grid because that is a very exciting piece of technology that still a little early, but the support is there if you do support modern browsers. The ability to have almost a Twitter bootstrap grid built into the browser, into CSS itself is just awesome. But this, this demo was just very, just so awe-inspiring that you could do this amount of customization. If you had told me this had been possible 10 years ago when I was still making rounded corners with images and trying to make uh, gradients with background images as well, and I had this full-fledged, like incredible, beautiful layout just in CSS and HTML, I mean, that's just incredible, the progress and evolution that the web has had so far. So I definitely encourage you, if you have time, to definitely spend a little bit of it to learn CSS uh, uh, Grid because it's a very powerful technology that I can only imagine once it becomes fully adopted everywhere, it's probably going to replace Flexbox in many instances. Because many of the times that you use Flexbox now, you really want a grid. And Flexbox is almost like this middle layer we have until grid becomes uh, commonplace everywhere. But this demo is just like... Okay, and that is the show. But hopefully you enjoyed it. I also don't know if you noticed, but I have a new microphone, so the audio might have been a little bit better. So you can actually hear my lovely gravelly voice right now. The audio hopefully is a little bit better and you can actually uh, hear everything a little bit more clearly. But again, uh, thank you for coming by to the console log. Uh, tune in again next week for some new knowledge about JavaScript and the world that it contains. And uh, be sure to subscribe down below. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, say hello to me on Twitter, say hello down below, and do your codes. See you next week. Yeah.